All right guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is gonna be a video that needs to be done before I put out other videos on this topic. I talked to you guys way back whenever I had like, I think less than a thousand subscribers. And I told you guys that I was gonna do a 8090 video at 5,000 subscribers. So that's obviously gonna be coming up really soon. And I wanna do that video in a live truck. So that's the whole reason why I have not done it just yet. But in order to really dig into an ADL 90, we also need to understand just really how a torque based transmission works. Now this video, I'm gonna to try to keep everything short and sweet. And we're also gonna cover Gen 3, Gen 4, and Gen 5, because even your 4L60 is torque based. Maybe you knew that, maybe you didn't. So let's go ahead on and dive in. <laughs> All right guys, so the first vehicle we're gonna talk about is the Gen 3 stuff. Now, as I pretty much always do, I'm using a stock 2002 Silverado 5.3 file. And so one thing you have to remember is that airflow equals torque. So if injector flow rate is incorrect, if your math is incorrect, if your V table is incorrect, then torque is incorrect. If torque is incorrect, then the transmission pressures, shift speed, etc., is also incorrect. So I'm gonna show you, you've probably noticed this, but maybe you didn't put two and two together. So let's go to trans and we're gonna go to shift pressures, upshift, and then normal. So this is essentially the base desired shift pressure. Now this table directly, what this does is this number right here tells the ECU at this foot pound of torque, I want X amount of pressure. And then the ECU then looks over, you go to shift general, force motor current, and then this is shift pressure. And then it turns this shift pressure into milliamps. So, Everything is dictated off of torque. When you're making these adjustments, anytime you're adjusting things here, which first off, I will go in and let you guys know, for 4L60 tuning, if you have to turn up the, the pressure here a bunch, something wrong with the 4L60. So a properly built 4L60, you really shouldn't have to mess with this much at all. Some guys will copy over the tables from the tow hall or the performance mode. I can understand having to adjust it some, but if you have to shove a bunch of pressure on here, there's something wrong with that trans internally. Anyways, this is foot pounds of torque. This is base pressure. That's one of the reasons why we want to keep torque correct. Same thing goes for under shift pressure, upshift pressure modifiers. Now this is essentially like a, it's, it is a modifier for torque based off of transmission oil temp. And if you notice the axi again is torque. Same with shift timing. Shift timing is also torque based. If you notice that, I mean, there's a lot of torque based stuff in the 4L60 and 4L80. 4L80 look exactly the same. Most guys don't pay attention to this stuff. So say you've got a turbo truck and you did the half injector flow rate method, that way you have more resolution in cylinder air mass. If you did not scale your shift pressures at all on the transmission side, that's probably one of the reasons why you're burning up transmissions. Unfortunately for us, if we go under engine torque model, we really don't have a actual torque model that we can adjust. So I've actually personally tried messing with some of these and I never really got the result that I wanted when it come to modifying these. Same with the friction tables. Like this is all the torque stuff, accessory torque. But when it comes down to it, when you're scaling injector flow rate, just know that you can come over to trans, you can go under shift pressure, and then we can just do this. So say 40 foot pounds of torque would actually become 20. So you would take, copy this 40, you'd paste it to the 20. Then we would copy the 80, post it into the 40, so on and so forth. All the way on this one, same with performance. Now again, performance in the truck application is gonna to be tow haul. On the F bodies and Corvettes, you can wire up the tow haul button to work just like a truck and activate the secondary table. Same thing goes for here. 40 goes to 20, 80 goes to 40, so on and so forth. Same with the pressure modifiers, you can move everything down as well. Same with shift time, you can move everything down as well. Same with torque management. So torque management, basically how this works, you've got torque reduction right here. This is the amount of torque it wants to remove. And so again, this is a percentage of torque. This is not like foot pounds of torque. This is a percentage of torque. And so this table right here directly references engine, torque management, and then this spark retard versus torque reduction. So this is the percentage of torque that needs to be reduced. This is the amount of timing it's pulling. And this is the inverse table of that. So a lot of guys don't pair these up correctly. But anyway, so that's how the torque based stuff works on the Gen 3 stuff. Let's go on and move into the Gen 4 stuff. Before we go into Gen 4, I did forget to mention this. Whenever I did have accessory torque pulled up, just know that if you're scaling the injectors, which I'll do a full video on scaling injectors for the Gen 3 stuff, that can be one of my next videos upcoming soon. But on the Gen 3 stuff, when you're scaling torque, not only do you have to scale the transmission, but you also have to let the engine understand that everything is cut in half. So the accessory torque, this would be half. The AC pressure versus IAT, this would be halved. Anything that shows like friction would be halved. 
anything that is torque based because you have the injector flow rate you also have to half that so again it's not only the transmission it's also this other stuff didn't want to jump too much off topic but just because we were on the topic of scaling injector flow rate and making sure the torque is adjusted correctly for the trans i did want to note that so let's go ahead on and dive into gen 4. all right so now for gen 4 i've got pulled up a 2010 camaro l99 all the gen 4s are all going to be based the same so again everything in here is torque based as well so let's go ahead on and pull up how this works. So we're going to go under it. We'll start off with shift pressure. So shift pressure, upshift. Pattern X is traditionally what most of the 6L80s will use. Now, depending on which mode, you can actually look right here and it'll tell you which pattern it's using as to which mode you're using. So a Camaro that runs pattern B in sport will run pattern Y for pressure. So that'll be right here. This will be normal. This will be sport. So anyways, when you open this up, this is telling you how much pressure or KPA. So let me switch this over to PSI. We're in America. <laughs> so this is telling you how much PSI the base pressure is for the trans, and this is dictated by torque. So for reference, if you if your torque model is incorrect and the car is making 400 foot pounds of torque, but it's only registering 200 foot pounds of torque, we're going from a 203 PSI of base pressure down to 108 PSI. So you can tell how drastic that is. Same is gonna be for shift timing. So shift timing, your main shift timing table that the car uses for to dictate shifts, this right here, torque adder is where it starts and it is also torque based. So I look at my shift times in milliseconds. So you guys will notice the axis right here is torque based. So again, if your car makes 400 foot pounds, but it's only showing 200, instead of it shifting at 375 milliseconds, it's actually gonna shift at like 500-ish milliseconds. So the shift's gonna feel super lazy because of that. <laughs> now, one thing to note is with 6L80 stuff, shift times are added and subtracted in a lot of different places, but transition time, it'll actually have, so this is a percentage of shift time. So this is the inertia base. And inertia is basically telling it how aggressive you are. It's de kind of developing a shift feel, I guess is the best way to put it. So the more torque you go and the more RPM you go, traditionally the higher up the inertia goes. So just, we'll keep this table out. So we'll go over here to, to inertia factor profile. So what you've got, so on like on the one, two upshift, if we're low torque, so light on the throttle, low RPM, it's, we're gonna be using the number two or three-ish inertia profile, which would be right here. So that's where we get a little bit softer of shift times. As we are more aggressive on torque and then higher up in RPM, we go over here to nine and you can see how it's the smallest number of shift times. So if torque is wrong here, Whereas instead of shifting at nine on our, our inertia profile at 200 foot pounds of torque, we may actually be shifting at either seven or eight, which is going to make another, it's going to basically make the trans lazy again. So that's one of the reasons why you want to keep your torque model and everything accurate. Cause again, airflow equals torque. So a lot of guys, whenever they're work, tuning the transmissions and they know their torque models fudged because they don't know how to scale injectors correctly, which if you don't, Watch my channel. I've got plenty of videos showing you how to scale Gen 4 injectors properly, both on the 127 pound per hour operating system and the 63 pound per hour operating system. But some guys will just go in here and just rate the torque model where they'll go torque model general and they'll just go this EQ ratio and they'll just add, you know, 1.3 multiplier or something like that. That is incorrect. Doing it the correct way where airflow model is straight, math is straight, and the outputted torque is correct in your scanner is going to make the shift correct on the trans side of things. If your shift is incorrect on the trans side of things then you've got something else fudged. So that is one way of looking at it. So also note that shift times, because it's torque based shift times, also what you've got is you actually have shift pressure under adaptives. You've got oncoming and offgoing preset pressures. Now basically what the ECU do, does is the ECU will automatically adjust these. That way it completes the shift time in this amount of time. So if you've got a vehicle where you've put a bunch of oncoming and offgoing preset pressure on there and it shifts really good at first, but then out of nowhere, it starts to get softer and softer and softer. That means your shift time is too long. It basically either needs to be shortened or you need to reduce oncoming and offgoing preset pressure again. The actual target on 6L80, 6L90 is it wants to achieve the final desired shift time. No matter what, now keep in mind, you have all these different modifiers here. So we have the transition time here, we've got desired shift time here, you've got downshift shift times, you have all the shift times, but the ECU is constantly adapting ongoing and offgoing preset pressures to actually target that specific shift time. And that specific shift time is based off of torque. So anyways, 
that's it on Gen 4. We'll, t we'll discuss more on this. Obviously, I have plenty more videos I really need to do on the 6L80 when it comes to doing the high-performance versions of the 6L80. But let's go on and dive into Gen 5 and talk about Gen 5 6L80 and Gen 5 8L90. All right, so I'm gonna interrupt this video. If you're still with me, you clearly wanna learn how to tune because we're, I mean, I'm, I'm editing the video right now, but we're 10 minutes into this thing and it's not the most action-packed content, but hopefully you guys are enjoying it. So just wanna give you guys a heads up as to where I'm at. So I actually am working on building a website right now. Like I'm literally in the process of building it. So it's not open yet, but this website's gonna, basically gonna be based off of tuner tips. So it's gonna have some videos on there. It's gonna have, the, the biggest thing that I think I'm gonna offer is an almost complete tune. So think of it like a really good base file. These base files are gonna be for you guys that want to learn how to tune your vehicles. So you already have a stock file. I'm gonna send you a file from a known running good combination that's gonna have a V table that's super close, a math curve that's super close, a timing table that's super close, shift schedule that's super close, everything's close, and you're gonna finish dialing it in on your own. This is not remote tuning support. This is not a shooting me emails back and forth trying to figure this out. That would be additional cost. But if you just want just a down and dirty base file for your vehicle, that's not just some bullshit tune that a lot of these guys send out. Like a lot of these guys send out these base files where they're not even in the even in the ballpark. No, I'm going to send you out a base file that is you can start your vehicle up. It should run and drive right away. If it doesn't run and drive right away, you'll know that you need to look for something mechanical. It's just going to be something like that. But it's like I said, I'm going to call it an almost complete tune. Also, the website's going to offer remote tuning. It's going to offer in-person dyno tuning appointments. So you're going to be able to actually book that stuff there. It's just basically just going to be a good website that's about me. I've never actually had a website before, so I'm going to have my own website. But if you guys are wanting the base files before the website comes up, you're more than welcome to email me. My email's in the description below. It's the remote tuning email. You can email me and just say, you know, base file wanted, and we'll discuss price. I think I'll probably be, I haven't fully figured it out, but I'll probably be somewhere between 150 and 350 on these base files. And again, these are not remote tuning files. This is just literally just, I send you a file, you go from there. Also, I've had a ton of guys asking me about how to join the membership. There is a link in the description. I do a bunch of videos on membership. I'm doing more and more now, but you have to be silver support member and above to see the videos. Bronze level is just you supporting the channel. It's just like basically like a thank you for me. There's a link in the description. There's also a join button just below this video. So you can click join. It'll also give you the information on how to join memberships. So I am working more and more on the membership side of things. I've also done a couple membership videos this week to where I've had the, those guys you know, tell me what kind of videos they want. So I've got a big list of videos that I'm gonna be rolling out on the member side. This video that we're actually making right now technically was gonna be a members only video, but because I promised the 8L90 video, I feel like this video needs to be seen by everybody whether, you know, where there's no cost involved. So anyways, guys, appreciate your support the likes the comments the subscriptions i do greatly appreciate that I, I appreciate the memberships it's really helping me and it's helping the channel grow it's just it's helping the channel grow in the background at the moment but we're going to get this thing dialed in so anyways let's go on and jump into the gen 5 stuff all right guys so on gen 5 you guessed it it's torque based it's just like gen 4. this is a 2015 chevy silverado 5.3 with a 6l80 this one it's really 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 similar to the 6l80 file in the gen 4 stuff so same thing, shift pressures, they're torque based. So again, if torque is wrong, the shift pressure is gonna be wrong. Same thing with shift timing, torque adder is the main table for these. Now, I forgot to mention this, just so you guys are aware, anytime you see an axis where it shows this inertia factor, just know this is also inertia factor. Just know it's gonna be based off of this shift general inertia factor profile, both upshift, close throttle downshift, power downshift, all these, this is all inertia numbers. And remember that inertia is based off of shift feel. So if you want to firm it up a little bit, you can change it without modifying any of the other tables. You can add an inertia number here. So say you just want to add a one, let's just add one to this, anything but the nine, because obviously nine is our top number. But we could do this, and this truck right here on that one, two shift is going to firm up a little bit. Now, I don't do it this way, but I just want to make sure you guys are aware that you can, in fact, do it this way. Shift timing is handled that way. Everything is torque based, just like even torque management, this adder modifier is torque based right here. So this one is exactly the same. So what's cool about Gen 5, and this you may have noticed, Gen 4 cars from one tuner to another, they shift so drastically different. And that's really because Gen 4, 
people not making the torque model correct. They've got the injector scaled improperly, they've got the VVE model scaled, or set up improperly, or V model, math is incorrect. All of that stuff is incorrect. If you notice a lot of the Gen 5 vehicles, how they'll all shift pretty close to the same no matter who the tuner is, it's because nobody's fudging the torque model as bad when it comes to the wide open throttle shifts. So the cool part is, is the injectors with DI, most people leave the injectors alone, or if they upgrade injectors, usually there's only quality companies that make injectors for these. So it's pretty simple to get the injector data correct. And the torque model, you would be surprised at how close the torque model is gonna be at wide open throttle. Even if it's completely stock, you'd be surprised at how close it is. Because the factory does scale torque modeling all the way up. So you, know, you can come under here, engine, torque model, and these numbers right here, so this is based off of cam timing. So cam timing is really the only one that truly affects it in a drastic manner. But if we come under edit virtual torque, you know, we've got this is, is 800 milligrams of cylinder air mass or 0.8 grams. We can put in 2000 and it scales these this torque model all the way up to where it still fills it out the exact same way. So as long as you come through here and just kind of make this stuff make sense, which most people can do, most tuners can do. If you've got a Gen 5 vehicle to idle, I feel like you probably have enough common sense to get the torque model somewhat in the ballpark. And as long as you're somewhat in the ballpark, transmissions are gonna shift good on the Gen 5 stuff. That's the particulars of that one. Let's go ahead on and jump into a Gen 5 car with an 8L90. They are slightly different, but you'll see, we're pretty close to the same. All right, so I've got pulled up a 2016 Camaro. This was a stock eight-speed automatic file. So kind of same thing, shift pressures, it's still torque based. Now they're a little bit different as far as laying out, like it doesn't have the pattern X, Y, Z, all that stuff. You have TCC on, TCC off, but this is the base pressures, just like what you saw in that pattern X, pattern Y, pattern Z. So there's that, that is torque based. Same thing with shift timing. Shift timing is the same as, it's, as the others where it's torque based. This one still has the same shift inertia. So, same here, still same torque based. If you want to speed up a shift on one of these, you can technically adjust the shift inertia a little bit. Now keep in mind when I'm telling you this stuff, I'm telling you what you can do, you have to tune it from there. You decide on what you wanna do with your own vehicle, but realistically the best way to tune one of these is gonna to be to make some adjustments to shift times. And again, we will go into that on the 8L90 video that I will be doing on a live vehicle. So if you're not already subscribed, please do. Otherwise, the torque based stuff in here, it's pretty self explanatory when it comes down to now, as long as you guys understand RPM and torque, and make sure that you understand that the ECU needs to be spitting out a legitimate torque number that, that makes sense. And as long as it does, then these transmissions will hold up to whatever. So just let's just go and I'll pull this up. Let me pull up a um, pull up a 2015 Z06 A8, and I want you to see how little changes GM makes. Now keep in mind we're going from an LT1 Camaro that's rated at what 460 up to an LT4 that's rated at 650, and you'll notice that shift pressures are the same. You'll notice that shift time is different, but only slightly. It's nothing crazy. I mean, here's a difference in shift times. They will move the axis itself for torque, but it's nothing, it's really nothing drastic. So it doesn't take much in the eight speed stuff to get them to shift correctly. As long as you just pay attention to the torque model, make sure your airflow model is accurate, which airflow model meaning that VVE and MAF is accurate. If all that stuff is accurate, these things are gonna shift like it's supposed to. So anyways, guys, that's my video on the torque-based transmissions. If y'all have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I will be bringing out more and more videos on this, and I will be doing the video on 8L90, and we're going to also discuss doing higher horsepower 6L80s, and we're going to discuss doing higher horsepower 8L90s. But I'm also going to be doing some other transmission stuff in the members only videos. But again, this 8L90 video is going to be coming out as soon as I have a good candidate truck or car come in, which should be the next week or two. Thanks for the likes, the comments, the subscriptions. I appreciate all the support and I will talk to you in the next one.